know what I just figured out? I like seeing you just as much on the weekends as I do during the week. It's true. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of October 13th. Now, if you've watched any of my shows, you know what I do. I share with you hot OTC and penny stocks. I go out searching through all the markets looking for stocks under five bucks that have potential to make us money. And I do most of my research by going to the charts first. I'm looking for a receptive chart, a chart that has heat. Maybe there's a lot of volume coming in or there's a breakout setup, something that makes that chart look like it's ready to start climbing. When I find a chart like that, then I'll go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst. When I find one, voila, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are what I share with you every day. And I've got three to share with you right now. First one we're going to take a look at is MMV Multi Metaverse Holdings. Now I'll confess, her chart is not exciting. She came on the market in January through a merger with a SPAC. She had a big rip then a big dip, then another huge rip, and now she's come back down, and she's about even keel right now. Not good, not bad, but here's the thing. The company is on the NASDAQ, but they are a shell company. They're not in business. They're not making any revenues. That's not good. Well, last month, they came out with the news press. They are involved in a merger deal with a company that is making millions of dollars, and as soon as the deal closes, boom, all that money is theirs. So MMV, she finished today on Friday at $1.21 and she took a drop of about 7.5%. She is on the NASDAQ, so you're going to be able to trade this for free. You can trade it pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So what is multi-metaverse holdings about? Well, would you believe me if I told you they are not involved in the metaverse? Except NFTs. Let's see what they tell us here about their company. Multi Metaverse Holdings is an animation and entertainment company dedicated to providing high quality immersive entertainment experience through original, user generated, and professional user generated content. MMV's signature Auto World brand has attracted a broad following among younger audiences in China. By leveraging the company's established user base, MMV has built a diverse product portfolio including animated content comic books, short videos, collectibles, stationery, consumer products, mobile games across Auto World brand, and they're even selling NFTs. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh no, God, she fell about 60% going from 50,000 shares down to just over 14,000 shares. Share structure for MMV you're going to like this. This is one of the reasons I'm sharing this stock with you. She has got a very low float. Now, in truth, I don't know what it is, but our outstanding share count is only at 2.6 million. And we know our float isn't going to be any higher than the outstanding share count and could be less. So no matter how you look at this, we've got ourselves a low float. Market cap for the company is only 3.1 million which is a problem. And we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. Disclosures for the company. We got lots of good news over here. The company came on the market January 5th through their merger with the SPAC. Well, right behind that in January and February, we had a whole bunch of investors come in. That's what an SC13G is. When investors come in, buy enough shares that they actually become partners with the company. They own a percentage of the business. They have voting rights. So all of these investors, that is good news. Speaking of good news, we are looking at news here going back to August 3rd when they got a piece of bad news. They had been contacted by the NASDAQ that their minimum market cap was too low. They say it has to be at $15 million. Well, we just saw that it was at 3.1. That means our market cap has to go up virtually five times more. Well, market cap is figured out by multiplying the outstanding share count times the price. Well, if we have to get this up five times more, that means that price has to go up five times higher. This has to reach $6 for them to hit the market cap and be out of hot water. Now, normally I would say, eh, that doesn't sound possible to me. But we've got some serious catalysts here. 
First, we've got a super small float. This thing catches some volume. It is going to run. And when the next piece of news comes out, that may be all we need. These next two pieces of news here are excellent. We had one come out September 12th. The company enters into a debt conversion agreement with Gaia and term sheets with pipe investors. Without going into the news press because it's pretty big, what they've done is they had someone they owed money to, a debtor, $7 million. Well, they turned that debtor into an investor. Instead of paying him with money, they paid him with shares. Excellent. Then they got pipe investors. They've got two companies that say they will buy up to $20 million worth of shares of the company sometime in the future when conditions are right. We don't have any dates, but we do have commitments. And then the big news. This came out September 15th. In this news press, they tell us that the company has entered into an agreement to acquire Tehomi. The company announced today that it has acquired 100% equity in Shanghai Shengran Information Technology Company. MMV expects to complete this transaction by the end of this year. The acquisition will be a major milestone for MMV in expanding its portfolio and will significantly enhance its financial performance, including revenue and cash flow. No duh. Daomi was founded in 2007 and is one of China's leading entertainment companies for the younger generations for more than a decade. They have influenced millions of the country's youth. Taomi has successfully developed and operated many popular video games and secured hundreds of millions of cumulative registered users. In addition to video games, Taomi has provided its users with additional entertainment experiences such as animation and merchandise. Taomi has produced a library of over 500 episodes of animation series and 11 animation-based movies in these brands. They've got a lot of stuff. They've got toys. They've got movies. They've got games. They've got mobile apps. They've even got NFTs. Now, this is what's most important. We are talking about a shell company that has no money on the NASDAQ. This is going to bring them money. How much? Well, they tell us that Taomi at the end of 2022 had generated $33.6 million. And at the end of June of this year, Taomi had generated $42.6 million. So we're not just talking one or two million, which would be good from a shell company making nothing, jumping to one or two million would be great. But we are jumping up to 30 to $40 million. That is excellent. And once we get a news press saying this deal is closed and we're in the fourth quarter right now, it could happen anytime. This thing is going to run. And with an itty bitty float the way it's got, it could launch, folks. Let's go take a look at this chart. We're going to chart this stock and all the others on my free trading platform. This is Think or Swim. You get it for free when you sign up with TD Ameritrade, and that doesn't cost you anything either. So we are looking at multi-metaverse holdings, ticker MMV. That's a one-day, one-year chart, and actually, it's the entire chart. This is when they came on the market. That is January 5th. Now, this was closing a merger deal with a SPAC. Now, all SPACs have a price of $10 per share until they close the deal. That is to say it's worth $10. Now, you can bid it up and you can bid it down, but it's always worth $10 until the deal is closed. Well, it looks here like the price was drove down to $6.55 before the deal closed. And when it closed, it erupted. The price jumped all the way to a 52-week high of $17.75 and then fell abruptly down here to roughly $0.85 cents zone, which is her 52-week low. Coming on down to that six-month, four-hour view, well, there's our high now, this huge rip, which happened on July, no, June 1st, and I don't know why. I did go looking. I could not find any reason why it jumped this high, and it really did rip, folks. Went from basically a dollar to $4, a 400% rip, and then she came all the way back down. Now, I've got two strong supports and resistances here. She has been bouncing off of this low a couple times. She just hit it here. She's gotten herself on top of the 200, and she has been staying up there, working it right now. She needs a catalyst. She's got a small float. This news came out back in September. 
That's when she ran all the way up here on that merger deal. And now she's hanging around waiting for that next piece of news. Our volume, it's actually been dropping here. It hasn't diminished completely. It's stronger than it was before the news, but it has been tapering off. Our oscillators, uh, they seem all a bit of plants and cool, don't they? Going straight across, straight across, straight across. Everything is going straight across. They are waiting right now. Now, I want you to notice down here on my RSI, I've got a support line drawn here. Why did I do that? Well, it seems to me every time it gets above this point right here on the chart, that's when it starts to run. Anytime she falls below that line, goes straight up, that's when she starts to fall. So I use this line to help me know when the price is starting to rise. Rather than just looking at the bars, as long as she's above this line, I know she's normally climbing. When she's below it, I know she's normally falling. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. High bubble 20 days ago of $1.59, falling down to a low of $1.06, and she has been basically staying around the 200. This is what I like to call a rubber ball bounce. She fell under the water and has to float, so she comes right back up. And she is just bobbling up there right now. And she is floating right now over top of her 200 haul. A lot of you don't know what this is. Most of you don't use it. 200 haul is like your 200-day SMA. It takes 200 days of prices, averages them together, but then puts more credence on current prices. So you end up with a line that's closer to the price. It's kind of like a current 200-day SMA, and this would be the old 200-day SMA. And the price is between both of them right now. Oscillators, still plants it and cool. Things are still going sideways, but they show signs of trying to recover. You see things are trying to push up right now, like our RSI, which is now getting on top of my bar, right? Just getting on top of it, into the strong zone. Looking at our five-day, five-minute view. High here of $1.41 down to $1.21, and man, she is right on that 200, which isn't an uptrend, gradual, but it is climbing. She is fighting with this right now, staying above it. I'm not crazy about these other SMAs all coming down right now. Our oscillators are doing the same thing, except our RSI, which has pushed up over top of my support resistance here and is on top of it. Now, I'm not looking at this to run tomorrow, Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, unless a piece of news comes out that says the merger is closed because they're going to go from making no money to making 30 to $40 million. That is a huge catalyst. Now might be a good time to get yourself a starter position. If she starts to dip more before the news comes out, average down. When that news comes out, she's probably going to run and you're going to have to pick up the rest of what you want at whatever price you can get it at. I'm liking MMV, not immediately, but as a short swing down the road. Without a doubt and without exaggeration, I have a hot opportunity for you folks. This literally is a hot penny stock, a day trader's dream. And the only reason we're able to take advantage of this is because the stock got halted on Friday. I don't know why, and I really don't care. All I know is it now avails us of this opportunity. This is ticker PCTI, PCTEL. Now, normally, when I see these sort of news presses, I'll post the news, but it really isn't worth posting because by the time I post it, even though the news just came out minutes ago, the opportunity is gone. In minutes, it is fulfilled and over, and there's no reason to even post the news, but I do. Well, this time we get a chance to take advantage of it. This is how it breaks down. October 2nd, all the insiders got shares in the company. They all bought them at $3.53, 2,000 of them. Each one was the same purchase, a little curious. Well, that got the stock running. She's been climbing for about eight or nine days. And then three days ago, she started to fall and she settled down here at this $4.66. Well, then that news came out on Friday that another company is buying this company out for cash. So all the shareholders are just going to be paid cash for every share they own. Well, she's been halted. Normally when news comes out like that, wherever the price is, I mean in minutes, it jumps right up to the top price and it just sits there and it doesn't go any further and the opportunity is done. 
Well, this hasn't moved yet. Matter of fact, the price came down. So we have more gains to be taken. So PCTI, she finished today at $4.66 with about 1% drop. She too is on the NASDAQ. So it really isn't important what this company does, but let's take a look at the share structure and the financials just so you have a quick idea. First off, the relative volume around the company on Friday with the halt, she was normally doing 57,000 shares. She only got 21,000 shares. I'm sure the halt had a lot to do with it. Share structure for the company, all we know is the outstanding share count of about 19 million. Doesn't matter what the float is, the company's disappearing. Were they making money? Let's see here. Well, yeah, they were making money and they were in profit. At the end of 2022, they did almost $100 million. You got to add three zeros to any of the numbers down here. And they were taking profits. So everything was looking good. Looking at those disclosures, there's all your Form 4s on October 2nd. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders, the management, acquire or dispose of shares. And that includes buying and selling. Well, this is one of them. This is Newman David, Chief Executive Officer up here. They tell us that, and they all got the same, they all got 2,000 shares at $3.53. And they tell us down here, shares acquired under PCTEL 2019 Employee Stock Purchase Plan. Now, I don't know if that has anything to do with the news. I'm sure the insiders knew that this big news, this buyout was coming. So maybe this has something to do with it. Maybe it doesn't. I'm really not sure. So let's take a look at that news. It came out on the 14th, right? This just came out. They tell us in this news that the company, which is a leading global provider of wireless technology solutions, today announced it has reached a definitive agreement to be acquired by Amphenol Corporation. They are on the market, ticker APH. This is their stock. They are currently at $81 right now, and they don't want to give us any shares in their company. That's not the way they want to do it. They just want to buy these shares and be done with us. And they tell us they are going to pay us $7 a share. Right now, we are at $4.66. Now, I don't know when they're going to unhalt this. I'm presuming Monday. Will they unhalt it pre-market? If they do, it's going to be over pre-market. It will be done, folks. Now, the way I would play it, if I was there and I seen it unhalted pre-market, you can't do a market order in the pre-market hours. You could do that in regular hours, but not pre-market. So you got to use a limit order. Well, maybe if it's at 466 and she's going to be jumping to seven bucks, maybe I'll put in 520, 550, maybe as a limit order and hope it catches. If it doesn't, Say la vie. If it does, I've made myself a buck fifty or something like that on each share. They tell us down here that the transaction is expected to close in the fourth quarter, which is what we're in right now, or early 2024. Now, once the price reaches 696, it'll get right up underneath seven bucks. It'll stick there. Nobody's going to want to sell and lose their profit and nobody's going to push it up any higher because who wants to buy it per hire when it's only going to be bought at seven. So it's just going to go sideways for a long time until this deal is closed. Let's go take a look at this chart. Taking a look at PCTEL, this is ticker PCTI, and we are on a one hour, 20 day chart. The history really doesn't matter for us, does it? So we had a low here of 410. Right here is October 2nd. That's when she started to climb. Nice and steady climb, pushing it all the way up to $5.03. And then she's fallen down here to $4.66. And right now she is stuck on halt. She can't do anything. Our oscillators, everything looks cold. Doesn't look like it's going to go up, but we know it is. I guarantee it, folks. It's going to go up. Looking at that five day, five minute chart. So she's come under the 200. She hit a low here of 465. She bounced a lot through here. Now in the morning on Friday, she jumped from 465 up to 482. That's nothing. She came back down and she is underneath the 50 day. She's underneath the 20, laying on top of that 200 haul. And our oscillators are cold, very cold. 
So that's where she sits right now. She is at 466, halted at a low, going up to seven bucks. You've got to determine if you want to play this. Now remember, you can't lose. You might get it at, I don't know, $6.80. Well, they're going to pay you $7, so you are going to get your money out of it. You don't have to worry about this one dropping. I feel very confident about that. It is a matter of, can I get in? This thing is going to, once they unhalt it, it's going to be moving. Now, here's the thing, folks. It's first come, first served on these orders. Whoever's orders are in right now, their prices are going to be seen first. Your order is going to come behind them. So don't be surprised if you had a price and it just flies right on by you. That'll be because of everyone else who got in yesterday or Friday. So PCTI, it is a hot play if you can get a part of it. Our last ticker, it's a biotech. I know, but what can I say? It's got a hot chart. This is Lexicon Pharmaceuticals, ticker LXRX. And she does have a hot chart. It's an atypical breakout chart. It is just setting up on the four hour, but the one hour, that is a full fledged breakout right now. And it's got good cause. On the ninth, they had a big news press come out. And then just a couple of days later, they had a huge insider buy of a million shares. So LXRX finished the day on Friday at $1.19 with about 14.5% gains. And she is on the NASDAQ. So we know that she's a biotech, but what is she involved with? Well, they tell us here that Lexicon is a biopharmaceutical company with a mission of pioneering medicines that transform patients' lives. Through its Genome 5000 program, Lexicon scientists studied the role and function of nearly 5,000 genes and identified more than 100 protein targets with significant therapeutic potential in a range of diseases. Through the precise targeting of these proteins, Lexicon is pioneering the discovery and development of innovative medicines to treat diseases safely and effectively. Lexicon has advanced multiple medicines already to market and has a pipeline of promising drug candidates for heart failure, neuropathic pain, diabetes, and metabolism. So what was the relative volume around the company today? That's what we're talking about. Virtually 300% increase, jumping from 2.3 million to 6.6 million. Share structure, well, they don't give us a lot of information here. Outstanding share count is all we get. 244 million, just under a quarter billion shares. And we don't have a clue what the float is. It could be near a quarter billion, or it could be a lot less. Your guess is as good as mine. Market cap for LXRX, that is up there at 291 million. Financials for the company. Well, these are a bit kooky, and I'll be honest, I didn't do a deep dive, so I don't understand. Back in 2019, they had $322 million. Was it this company or was it a different company back then? I don't know. A year later, they fell down to 23 million, down to 300,000, down to 139,000 in 2022. Looking at our quarterlies, well, now they're going the opposite way. We have all tiny numbers here, and now she's jumped. Now, it's nowhere near a million dollars, but that is over 12 times her normal revenues. She is at 317000 jumping from 24000 Again, I don't know what all of this is about. Some more due diligence is required, but this isn't going to affect what we are looking at for the catalyst. Checking out those disclosures. We do have a very important filing over here. This Form 4 right here came out on the 12th. This is the big insider buy. This is DeBain Raymond. He is a director of the company. He has made three purchases over the course of three days, the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th of this month, buying himself over a half a million, 340,000, and 148,000 shares all at prices between a dollar three and a dollar thirteen, and right now he owns a total of 5.4 million shares. You think he knows something? You think he's getting ready for a payout? Well, here's the news that came out just before he made his buy. In PEFA receives preferred formulary status with Express Scripts for Medicare patients. They tell us here that Impefa recently was approved by FDA for treatment of heart failure. Express Scripts 
has determined that it will list NPEFA as a preferred product on the Medicare national formularies starting November 1st. On May 26, 2023, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved MPEFA, a once-daily oral tablet to reduce the risk of cardiovascular death, hospitalization for heart failure, and urgent heart failure visits in adults with heart failure or type 2 diabetes, mellitus, chronic kidney disease, and other cardiovascular risk factors. MPEFA is currently commercially available in the USA. And then that other piece of news was about that million share purchase. So the purchase came after this news. I think he thinks this news is big. I think he thinks that with the drug being paid for by Medicare, they're going to get a lot more business. Let's go take a look at this chart. We're going to check out the chart now for LXRX, Lexicon Pharmaceuticals. We are looking at a six month, four hour chart. These are our 52 week highs and lows. We've got a high here in May of $4.14 and a long drawn out fall to our 52 week low at the beginning of this month of 96 cents. Now we had a lot of volume back in this area. It has gotten light and it is starting to pick back up right now. Off of this low bubble, she bounced up over that 50 day SMA crouched down and then pounced. And right now she is floating on that nine day SMA pushing up. Our oscillators are all strong. We have a push away on our PPO. Our MACD is pushing up and look at that RSI climbing fast, going from 50 up to 65. Checking out our 20 day, one hour view. Now that's a full fledged breakout right there, folks. Here's our supports and resistances that we're gonna have to tackle as we climb up. Our first one here is at $1.29. We broke that once already with our directional intentional spike. This one here, when she was under the 200, she jumped up real high, came back down, but no lower than where she started from. Now you've got my attention. I know you're thinking about breaking out, so I'm gonna watch it. So then she crouched down like a cat, getting ready to pounce, and then she pounced jumped up on top of the 200 as soon as it was level. You see how flat it is? That's when she decides she's gonna make her move. She jumped up there, tested it a few times. She jumps up and down on it, making sure it's strong, stabs a pillar down there to support herself, and then flies. Look at all the green bars. Every one of them has a higher low than the one before, even after market, still climbing. We've had our 20 day and our 50 day and our 200 haul all cross the 200 day SMA. This is looking very strong. Oscillators agree with me. Our PPO and MACD are all pushing up. Green bars accumulating. RSI has been surging to the top. It is up there now at 69.3. Five day, five minute look. So we got <laughs> a high and low in the same bar. We went from 99 cents up to $1.31. Came back down to this 200 has been fighting it really hard. She jumped up on it. This tells me she was serious about getting up there, tested it hard, and she has bounced off of that, and she is rocketing right now, floating on her nine, bouncing on the 20, ignoring the big SMAs. The price is light. Oscillators, they're not as strong as they were, but they are still pushing up. PPO is climbing. We did have a turn under on our MACD, but it is coming back up right now. And our RSI is pushing up again. She is at 62. LXRX, you've just had an insider buy 1 million shares at over a dollar a piece. That was over a million dollar investment from somebody on the inside who knows everything that's going on with this company. That should be enough catalyst for you. But we do have the secondary catalyst. The FDA approved this drug and it is going to be paid for by Medicare. This is all juicy, juicy juice. So folks, a little fly. So folks, put this, <laughs> get out of here. Put this on your watch list, folks. LXRX, Lexicon Pharmaceuticals. Something looks like it's about to So we got three hot stocks there. MMV going through a merger, a shell company with no revenues coming into millions of dollars. And we didn't mention it, but she's got a warrant as well. It's been getting a lot of activity, bouncing from a nickel up to 60 cents and coming back down. 
So you may want to consider that as well. PCTI, the stock is halted. It is a cash buyout. We're at 466, it's going up to $7. You're gonna have to watch that one. It's gonna happen just like that. And then our very last stock we covered, that was LXRX. Insider investing a million dollars after big news. I think he knows something we don't, right? Now, I didn't cover everything, folks, so please go do some more due diligence. Spend your time doing DD before you spend your money on the stock. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.